Hello and welcome to the Idiot Book Nook. My name is Blazewing, my pronouns are they, them. My name's Lady Punnett, my pronouns are sometimes... are she... <laughs> and you haven't had anything Rewind. spicy yet today. I have not. So we're off to a great start. Um, my name's Lady Punnett, my pronouns are primarily she, her, sometimes they, them. Today is a she, her kind of day. And I'm Kurdishai. My pronouns are she, her, sometimes he, them. Today's a her day. We are going to be reading from The Vampire Jacktown Since Fame Has Its Price, Chapter 7 today. But before we get started with that, if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can do so at linktr.ee slash idiotbooknook. You'll be able to find links to our podcast, to the YouTube, to the Twitch, and all of our individual projects. You'll be able to see what we're up to on the net. Come join us when we stream on Wednesdays, usually in the mornings. Uh, or check out the podcast and the YouTube, where we host all of our episodes retroactively. Uh, as always with this book, we have just a bit of housekeeping to get into. So, um, with that being said, before you enjoy your reading experience of The Vampire Jacktown Sin Fame Has Its Price, please be aware of the following trigger warnings. Rape, moments of discrimination, graphic violence, and grooming. Quote, as someone who has had their power taken from them, I believe in the importance of consent in all things. However, to shy away from these topics is to not make them go away, but to be blind to them. Jack Townsend. Folks, are we ready? Be. There's a bird. We're ready. Excellent. As with all things, uh, we're reading rolls um, few and far between, but the discussion's usually quite enlightening. Fame Has Its Price by The Vampire Jack Townsend, Chapter 7, Awakening. <clears throat> Sometime later, the void dissolved. The darkness parted, and it was almost like the reds and golds of the room from the previous night were painted before my eyes by an old master. Death fizzled away. My last and first image waiting to greet me was the glory of the Lucifer mural stretched above my naked body. The chill of doom evaporated from my skin before my body wrenched, frantic for breath. Yet not a trace of air flowed into my lungs as it swept through my parted lips. I was breathing, but the feeling was cold and hollow. My lungs were like stone. Instead, the air flooded into my numb chest cavity. I was alive, however, not. The strange realization caused panic to press against the back of my eyes. I was dead. Shrill anxiety drilled into the top rung of my spine, jolting my body forward and wrenching me from the ebon sheets. A yelp erupted from the base of my throat. I couldn't help it. Every extremity felt like a fusion of ice and electricity. Extremities. Hands. Claws. My nails were now tapered into claws. They tore into the silk bedclothes, ripping through them like cheesecloth. It was then I realized my new potential. I had been strong all my life. My physicality was nothing to sniff at. An avid fitness fanatic and backstreet brawler, but now a new kind of strength buzzed under my fingertips, unlike anything I ever felt before. Tossing aside the tattered sheets, I stared at my hands. Vibrant blue veins ran under the surface of pale flesh like tiny slivers of frost. Turning over my left wrist, I marveled as I clenched and unclenched my fist, seeing every tiny muscular fiber go to work. Impossible. Living art. My perception was beyond human. In fact, every thread, every divot, every particle of dust was dilated up to maximum now. The fabric of space was not only obvious, it was blaring. My eyes drank in every detail, every fractal of light. Light. The long black curtains had been drawn shut. 
I had no doubt the intention was to shut out any trace of sunlight, though I remained unsure of what time of day it was. When I realized there was no sign of Alexander anywhere, my heart gave a mighty tug. I needed him. I wanted to feel him there, next to me, comforting me, holding me. Perhaps I could find him. He couldn't have been far. I launched out of the sheets and into the air without effort. My body felt nearly weightless as I flung myself from the bed and almost slammed into one of the posts, holding up the frame. I landed like a cat, my bare feet sliding past the black furred rug. Glancing over my shoulder and back to the bed, I realized the distance was an easy thirty feet away. Remarkable. I wondered what else I could do. What other possibilities were in store for me? The desire to explore pulled at my toes. I wanted to see the club at the very least. Were the other people who worked there also vampires? The bartender? The lovely woman from the boutique? The front desk guard? I wondered how much magic really teemed under the noses of mundane people. A hundred more questions buzzed around my head like a swarm of angry hornets. I retrieved the red hoodie and the leather pants from the floor, sliding into the sleeves and hardly, and hardly zipping it in the front. Alexander's evocative appearance from the night before inspired me. I left the zipper half open, my chiseled pectorals on full display, as his had been. Thinking back to the way Annabelle had admired me, I remember how much I remembered how much I reveal, uh, reveled in the attention. Not so far away, the door beckoned, tempted, dared. In an instant, my hand gripped the knob, and the realization hit me like a punch to the back of the head. It seemed like I had blinked myself from one side of the room to the other, my body traveling faster than the thought it took to work my legs. My mind raced. I, was I still dreaming? Or was inhuman speed part of my new arsenal of abilities? Lost in the thought of it, I gently caressed the door's wooden surface. It was then that I noticed the ecstasy of touch. I fingered every indent, as if it were a lover from the past every motion sensual without even uh, without such an intention. The subtle changes in the mahogany sent lovely little zaps of pleasure through my system, and I pulled my hand away. I was different, changed. It was so very clear. This was all too real. Alexander was divine, and I was undead. As I went to leave, something sleek and white in my periphery caught my attention. A small letter had been left for me on the dresser, propped against the wall to the right of the door. My new name whispered across the white paper in elegant cursive. I opened the crisp envelope, careful not to move too fast and accidentally tear the note to shreds. Yep, that would be your go. Dear Jack, I know it will be difficult to control yourself in these early moments, to tame your overwhelming new senses, but I ask you to please remain in this room. There are a few matters I must attend to, and if these things are not addressed, I fear the dangers you may face beyond this threshold. Ignore, yeah, thresh <laughs> Ignore the thirst you're drying your throat and the hunger in your belly. We will ensure you are well fed and taken care of. One more thing, my beloved. If you leave the sanctity of my room without permission, which you very well may attempt to do, beware a man in a black suit with a red dress shirt. He is no enemy, but it is best I make the necessary introductions when I return. Soon, so soon, my darling. Yours always, and into eternity, Alexander. Curious. A man in a black suit and a red dress shirt didn't sound ominous at all. Not one bit. Okay, it was time to think logically. If there were others I had to be wary of, maybe I should heed Alexander's advice. Perhaps it would have been best to return to the comfortable sheets and close my eyes, though I wasn't sure if sleep was something I could do anymore. <clears throat> Then, like a cannon blast to the gut, it hit me. 
My nostrils pulled false breath inward, but the oxygen found nothing to stick to. That didn't stop the sense beyond the door from capturing me. It was like nothing I had ever experienced. The aroma of a thousand summers, of every feast known to man, of every favorite food and drink, of paradise and warmth and sex and sumptuousness. Nothing compared. It was impossible to give a truly worthy depiction. A new beast roared up from my depths. It wasn't just my stomach, it was the very foundation of my essence roaring in defiance at Alexander's request that I stay still. Hunger. 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 My new talons found the knob again. Slam! The door was sent against the wall of the corridor, the paintings swinging from the force I wasn't accustomed to yet. One of them swung straight off its nail and crashed to the floor, scattering glass everywhere. Shit, I, mum I mumbled to myself. I had to be careful. I crept down the hallway, every old and weary face within the canvases watching me. Now, I felt they stared less mockingly and more with a sort of silent approval. Reaching the end of the hallway, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in one of the paintings housed in the glass. I halted at once. There, in the reflection, was a man I'd never met. Taking a few steps back, I tried harder to catch the stranger's gaze in the reflection. Horror struck me. This was no mirage or trick of the light. This was me. My long black curls were still there, but under them was a firm and unforgiving brow, a tighter jaw, higher cheekbones, and those eyes. Menacing red eyes. Not like Alexander's purple hues whatsoever. I looked like a demon straight from the depths of hell. Panic set in, my fingertips tracing the face that was no longer mine. Who was this? Never mind who, but how? How did my face change entirely, as if someone had given me plastic surgery overnight? Everything about me was more defined, straighter, sharper, more severe. Even my lips were fuller. The red eyes would have been a ghoulish sight if I hadn't looked like I belonged on a runway. Memories from the night before scrambled through my mind as I stumbled back from the sight, my mouth agape in a silent scream. What happened to James? James. Sweet, sensitive, clumsy James. No one would ever see him again. James Donovan was dead. As I fell back, though with my gaze still locked onto this new face, I realized something more had been added to the visage something glinting just below the upper lip. Holding my breath, I leaned forward once again, my fingers delving into my mouth and curling my lips back. Twin fangs had replaced my normal flatter canines. I cried out and fell against the wall behind me, both palms flying to cover my mouth in my shock. However, I accidentally bit down on the inside of my cheek. Blood filled my maw and ecstasy flooded every single sense I had left. <clears throat> I tried to keep quiet, blood dripping between my fingers and spilling into the carpet. My hand, a sticky mess. Sweet, succulent, my mind swam and the room faded for the briefest of moments. It was all I could do to collect myself and lick the fingers clean. My new red gaze darted from the coveted drops to take one last look at this new version of myself in the reflection of the glass. My mind formed one singular word. Monster. I turned to leave the site, attempting to shake off the idea of someone violating me in such a personal and terrifying way, to replace my face with something new, to instead focus on the scents and sounds coming from down the carpeted stairs. Down I went, my steps becoming more hasty as I reached the familiar sixth floor. The curtains here were open. It was black outside, well past sunset. I was unsure if I had lost only a single day or if I had been dead longer. The last few times I found myself in the club, it had been mostly empty, so I expected much of the same. This time, however, it wasn't as vacant as I had hoped. There, just past the dance floor, beyond the tables and chairs, a man sat at the bar, facing the tender. Two men, instead of just the one I had met the night prior. 
It was rather embarrassing to pad through the club barefoot, but I was freshly undead. What did it matter? What did anything matter anymore? I continued towards the bar, trying to swallow down the knot stirring in my belly. It was hard to parse whether it was nerves or the lingering hunger. Well, well, well. Look at you. The bartender from earlier moved to greet me at the corner closest to me, his thick, hairy hands wiping down a glass of something the other man had just finished. You decided to stay for good, huh? Got yourself the gig? As the bartender croaked at me with a wry smile, the man leaning into the bar raised one dark eyebrow, his fingers drumming against the bar top with a definitive click-clack. His claws were sharp and left mild indents. Another vampire. The mysterious patron cleared his throat, his glare locked onto the, te uh, onto the tender. He snapped his fingers, and the friendly gray man sidled back from the front of the sharper one, sharing in a whispered conversation. I strained to hear what they were saying, but it was no use. The room might as well have been silent. Realization set in. Supernatural hearing must have also come with supernatural quiet, which was frustrating. I knew their exchange was about me. The pointy man's fist slammed into the bar, the wood cracking beneath the pressure. I caught a glimpse of his fangs just behind his, the quickness of his snarl. It did what? And that is going to end chapter seven. Fame has its price. This is a short chapter. By the vampire Jack Townsend. Our next Yay. chapter is going to be chapter eight when we get to it. But for the moment, if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can do so at linktr.ee slash idiotbooknook, where you'll be able to find links to our podcast, to our YouTube, to our Twitch, and to all of our individual projects, should you decide to come and find out what we're up to these days. And for this episode of the Idiot Book Nook, I'm Blazewing. I'm Lady Punnett. And I'm Critter Shy. And we'll see you guys next episode. Bye bye!